guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new to this channel, uh, my name is Takuya. I'm a store developer of Inkdrop, which is a simple markdown note taking app. It runs smoothly on both uh, desktop and mobile platforms like macOS, Linux, Windows, iOS, and Android. And I'm building it alone. And in this channel, I'm sharing my experience on building it. So how do I actually build it? I'm basically doing a lot of things on terminal, uh, not IDE like VS Code, because uh, I just prefer uh, being on terminal as much as possible. Since Inkjob is built with uh, Electron for desktop and uh, React Native for mobile platforms, the most part of the app is uh, written in JavaScript. In the previous video, uh, I showed you how I'm coding JavaScript with Vim for my app. And as a software developer, uh, Git is of course a crucial system to manage uh, your code base and version histories. And today, I'd like to show you my actual Git workflow for managing the code base of my apps. Uh, this video is for those who already know about the basics of Git. I also prefer using Git on Terminal. I tried GUI Git clients, but uh, I couldn't get used to any of them uh, because I'm just happy with the Git command at the moment. But I'm not saying that uh, everyone should use a Git command on Terminal. Uh, if you ha already have a favorite GUI Git clients, uh, please go ahead and use it. And here is my Git setup. Uh, first, since I type the git command uh, many times every day, it's kind of hard to type the, the same command repeatedly. So I have a lot of command aliases com configured so that I can type the command quickly. Secondly, I use commit then uh, in order to generate human and machine friendly commit messages. And third, uh, I use tig. Uh, TIG. Uh, it's a TUI tool, I mean a text-based user interface for Git. Uh, it's, uh, you can use Git uh, interactively on Terminal. And fourth, I use Fugitib. It's another Vim plugin that allows you to use Git uh, on Vim directly. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna show you how I actually use them in my workflow. So let's dive into Terminal. Okay, let's do it. First off, in order to show you my Git workflow, I got a good side project. Uh, I drag to refurbish my homepage because it's been three or four years since I built the current one. So I think it's time to update it. And I was thinking of its new design. Uh, by the way, do you know Magic Voxel? It allows you to make low poly voxel art by combining 3D boxes, something like uh, you know, Minecraft, characters, towns, kitchens, or things like that uh, without effort. And I built a dog with it, and I also built a Deva's Life logo with it so that I can use them for my YouTube channel. Then, in this, ch in this renewal, uh, I'd like to use those voxel arts for my new homepage, but it's not interesting to just put them as pre-rendered images, uh, so I think it would be more fun if they are dynamically rendered and you can move them around. So uh, I'm working on it now. And I successfully exported the model from Magic Voxel and got it to render on browser. Now I'm gonna show you how I create a Git repository for this project and manage the code on it. And here is the Voxel Dog project. 
Let me show you how it looks like right now. Uh, here it is. Uh, cute, isn't it? <coughs> it is a dog using a laptop on a standing desk. It's not perfect yet. You know, the color is too light and the shadows are shaggy, but it just works fine for now. As you can see, uh, you got the camera moving around. So I'm happy with it and I'm gonna store it to a git repository. Well, let's create a new git repository. Uh, what should I name it? Uh, uh, let's name it Boxel Dog. Uh, 3D character uh, uh, rendering with 3.js. Okay. Make it. Uh, uh, it's public, but okay. Anyway, uh, let's go back to the terminal and uh, 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 to stop running it. Uh, when you run git, you typically type git. Right? But it's kind of annoying to type git git every time. So I set an alias for git as g. In fish shell, you can do it with alias g git. In this shell or bash, it's alias g equals git. Things like that. And then uh, let's make a git repository. Uh, now that you got the new repository initialized, here you got that git repository as you can see. Here. <coughs> uh, well, uh, it looks nice. Now, the repository URI is in the quick world. I'm gonna register it as the remote region. Okay, now it's being registered uh, like this. Okay, next, uh, 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 like this, uh, G space, G space, you can quickly uh, run the git command. It's so easy. You run this command many times a day. Say if you run 10, ten times a day, it's 300 times a month and then it's more than 3,000 times a year. You can type git every time, right? Then uh, next to check status, uh, the status command is alias to st. So you can avoid typing g status. Uh, the, the location of the configuration for this is in the, the git config file at areas section and uh, here it is. Uh, in this way, status is areas to st. I have a lot of other aliases as you can see like div, checkout, uh, commit, push to origin, and pull, branch, and so on. I define aliases for commands that I often use in from two to four letters. I will explain other aliases later. The first one is st status. I have it like this. Then none of the files are staged right now. So let's add them. Well, all of them, okay? Mm -hmm. Untracked files. Now that you all the files have been staged, it looks nice. 
Next to commit them, you can type like this as, as usual. Then you get Vim launched and you can input the commit message. But it's also annoying to do it. So I'm using a helper, helper tool which is called commit them. Commit them. I'm going to show you how to use it first. If you use type CZ, as you can see, it asks you to select a commit type from the list. For this commit, I select the fee as it's the first time to commit. Next, it asks, asks to select what scope this change is. And this time I specify asterisk because it is the first commit and uh, it's related to the whole scope. Next is to write a short description of this change. So it's gonna be like a initial commit. And then next is a long description about the detail of this change. It's optional. As this change doesn't have anything to describe, I leave it empty. Are there any breaking changes? No. Uh, does this change affect any open issues? No. Then the change has been committed. Well, what the commit message looks like is uh, this. Uh, feed, bracket, asterisk, colon, and initial commit. Uh, it's, it's very handy because you don't have to uh, think about the commit message format. Uh, then I'm, I'm going to show you. Uh, oops, I didn't proceed yet. Uh, so what, what is commit then? It's, it's here. Well, to install, use npm and install it globally. As you can see, uh, you can select messages from the list. Because comp message tend to be a uh, slip shot, but it helps you input preformatted messages without effort. You all have to do is to select from the predefined commit types, and you can input good commit messages without thinking too much about them. So it's useful not only for teams, but also for source developers. Uh, for example, in my case, uh, when I write release notes of my app in group, uh, by checking the comp history. Here is the desktop version version's comp history. As you can see, uh, at this line, uh, at this line, you can quickly know that the commit is uh, refactoring in the Redux scope which makes it to use React hooks. And, uh, and here it fixes a sidebar bug. And here it says it's a fix of a markdown preview bug. It improves performance of the data store module. They are pretty easy to understand, right? I often forget what I did soon. I totally don't remember what I did if I see a change uh, that's been made three or four weeks ago. But in this way, the commit messages are obvious to understand uh, what type and what scope of the change and even what change you made in detail. It helps you a lot. Then, back to the BoxyDog project. Uh, uh, speaking of this command, uh, that I run right git his. Uh, it's also an alias. Here it is. It's so it's so long, so you can't see the whole line. By the way, if you if you wanna use my git config, I published it on GitHub here at crossdog slash dot files public. So check it out. The git config is here. Okay. So I have hist areas with many options in order to make comp message beautiful. Uh, you got under alias named L log. This is, you know, uh, it displays not only commit logs, but also which files have been changed. So in my inkjob project, 
As you can see, you can quickly know which files have been changed. This is the alias for this. So the log command is very flexible to format the output. It's very powerful. I recommend you to check it out uh, on the web and to find your favorite log format. The rest of them are, uh, uh, for example, when you run df alias, you get a, a commit history and say uh, you want to know the detail of this commit of the side of a change, then if you chose it, it shows the div. The alias is defined uh, here. It runs a uh, git hist command and passes the output to peko which is a command line that allows you to select a line from std in. Then it passes the selected line to awk to extract, extract the commit hash. Then it runs git diff for it. I guess you don't understand what I'm talking about, but in a nutshell, it allows you to see a diff of an arbitrary commit that you chose from the commit history. So you can quickly look into the detail of the commit. Well, it's basically fine. But you also got TIG command, T-I-G, it's a reverse name of git. With this command, uh, you can interactively select a commit. It supports uh, Vim like key bindings like this, so it's nice for Vimers. For example, if you chose this commit by hitting enter key, it splits the pane and displays the diff here. So I usually use TIG to look into the recent change logs when writing release notes. So you can check other commits without running the command many times again and again. So it improves your workflow. TIG is here. It's a text mode interface for Git. Uh, I guess you can install it via Homebrew if you are on Mac. Well, let's push it to the remote repository. <coughs> now you have one commit in the local repository, so I'm going to push it to the remote. Well, it's done. Uh, okay, looks good. <coughs> this PS is an alias as well. It's annoying to type git push origin master <laughs> like this, so it's too long, right? So I made an alias as PS for this. In this alias, it does some work for you. In a nutshell, it helps you push from the current branch, it's currently on master, so it pushes from the local master to the remote master branch. And to pull, uh, you got PL areas. Similarly, it pulls from a remote branch that has the same name as the currently selected local branch, so you can avoid spe specifying a branch name when you are working on a branch other than master. So it helps your workflow as well. And also you got BR areas, which is for a branch. You can see the remote branch added it just now. So anyway, I'm talking about you should take advantage of areas. Okay. Now I created a git repository on github here, but you don't always have the tab open, right? But when you want to see an issue or want to look into the detail on github, I type g open. Then you can quickly open the github repository page on browser from terminal. So what is git open? 
it's defined here. It actually runs a shell command hub browse. So it's equivalent to running uh, hub browse. And you can get the exact same result like this. So the hub is a command line tool by GitHub that provides you some GitHub specific uh, some commands for Git. For example, uh, you can clone a repo without specifying a full URL to the repository. So it helps you do some GitHub specific tasks. So by using this, uh, you can quickly open up the uh, GitHub project page of the remote Git repository with git open command, like this. So I usually code with Vim, and I often want to use Git from Vim. Uh, to do that, for example, uh, here is the source code of the voxel dog project that renders a dog using 3.js. Uh, what should I do? Mm. Mm. Now the, cam the camera is moving around. Let's rotate the dog itself as well. Webpack uh, is not running. Okay, it started. Uh, uh, mm -mm. Okay, it started rotating. <laughs> Great. So let's commit it. Check the current git status. Then uh, run gd, which is an alias for diff. It's, it's diff. Here. So, okay. Uh, as you can see, it adds a line to rotate the dog. Like this, uh, I always check the diff before committing it. And if it's okay, uh, I run gcz to run commit then. But when you do this, if you added a option, you can make a commit that includes unstaged changes. And it'll be a fix. Uh, what is the scope? Uh, I think it's uh, animation. And rotate dog. Okay. Yes. Then you got another commit here. Then push it. Okay. Looks good. And. Uh, so I made a change with Beam. Uh, where is the dog, dog, dog here? So fast forward to three months later, uh, I no longer remember this change. So why I made this change? When I did it? Or who did it? I have no idea. And to check it, run gbrain. Then you get a commit history on the left side and the corres corresponding lines on the right side. So if you scroll it, uh, both pane sync. So you can see which line correspond to which commit respectively. Then when you hit enter, you can look into the div. So you found that this comment has been made on uh, 11 53 November 5th in order, uh, in order to rotate the dog. I often forget, forget what I did months ago. That way, I can quickly look into the past changes directory on Vim without 
browsing GitHub or running Git train command. And if you still don't get it, and you want to look more into it on GitHub, run a gopen command. Then you can open up the file on GitHub immediately. It refers the corresponding commit. It comes in handy when you want to look into diffs with other, another commit. Like this, I got back. I go back and forth between uh, terminal and the browser. So how to do this? I use a Vim plugin called uh, Vim Fugitive. I don't know. I, I don't know how to pr pronounce it though. Uh, it's a git wrapper for Vim. It supports various commands as you can see. Uh, please fiddle with it. And gopen is an alias for gbrowse. It's just my preference. Well, that's it. Uh, that's my my git workflow for my project. Uh, about other workflows like how I code with Beam, uh, please check out this video. And uh, how I use Tmax uh, uh, like this, splitting the window. Uh, please check out this one. Uh, my config files are published on GitHub here, so please check it out and copy and paste as you like. So that's my actual Git workflow. And as you may notice, uh, workflows will look uh, different if you work with a team. But I guess some tips are also useful for your team works. And that's pretty much it. So I hope it's helpful for improving your development workflow. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Peace.